Hey guys, welcome to our beginner's guide tutorial for importing external content into iClone. In this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is downloading a uh, file, downloading a prop rather, from uh, Google 3D Warehouse. And we're going to import that into our conversion software, 3D Exchange, and then we're going to convert that into iContent format so we can use it in our iClone scene. I'm going to give, be giving you a couple of uh, hints and tips along the way. So let's get started first. We're going to be importing these uh, cool looking statue dudes uh, in from Google 3D Warehouse and placing them in our scene. So first of all, we need to go to our browser. Let's go to uh, Google Chrome over here and I'm going to type in 3D Warehouse. Oop, it does it for me there. There we go. 3dwarehouse.sketchup.com, a great resource where you can find tons of uh, free models. And uh, what I'm going to do is just type in statue and I'm going to go ahead and search. And we should be able to find the dudes that we were uh, looking at before. There we go. We have the Easter Island Moai statues. So I'm going to click on that. You can give a uh, kind of a WebGL preview here if you want. You can just uh, click on that and uh, you know spin it around to get a little preview of your guys right there. I'm just going to go ahead and download this right now and get, download it as a SketchUp 5 model. And it'll download to my download folder down here. There we go. And I'm just going to show that in my folder. And so now we have this SKP file, which is a Google SketchUp file. Now you can also import FBX or OBJ uh, files as well, in addition to uh, BVH files for animations. So I'm just going to use this SKP file for this example. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it into 3D Exchange right here. I'll tab over to 3D Exchange. So here we have our stern looking uh, Moai statue dudes in 3D Exchange. And the first thing you'll notice is that their faces are a little bit bumpy. It doesn't look exactly like it did um, when we were looking at it in the browser. And we can fix that by smoothing out the normals. And we'll get to that in just a sec. The first thing I want to do though is I want to kind of separate these guys so they're their own sub props, they're their own individual guys, so they deserve to be their own sub props. And to select one of them, we can just, you know, select this guy right here, and you can see he's part of group seven. Now the naming may be different on certain props, you'll just have to hope that you get lucky with something that's named quite simply. So uh, for group three, that's this guy right here. So I'm going to shift and select all these uh, group three guys here. And on the top of the modify panel, I'm just going to go ahead and select make sub prop. And that's going to make this guy his own subprop. We can do the same thing for group seven. So shift select everything, make subprop, and then group six, shift select, and make subprop. So now each one of these guys are their own subprop. They'll be, they'll be imported together, but you can manipulate them separately, which is what we want. Now on to the normals here. So let's select uh, this guy here first, uh, group number three. By the way, we can also rename these if we select the name there and just press F2. We can call this guy, let's call this guy Eddie here. And this guy over here, F2, this guy looks maybe like a Freddy. And then we'll go to this third guy here, F2, and maybe Teddy. There we go, Teddy. IE, there we go. All right, so we have these three guys uh, named separately now instead of the generic group number whatever name. So let's select Eddie first of all, and let's go down here to the normal section. You can also use the O hotkey to get there faster. And let's take a look at this guy in detail. If I select show normal, nothing's gonna happen, but if I go ahead and select the uh, mesh parts of this guy, and then select show normal, I'm gonna have all these kind of lines popping out of him here. So let's take a look, closer look at these lines. You'll notice that there's a number of, it looks like he has little tufts of hair coming out. Now normals are basically lines that are perpendicular to the face that they're supposed to represent. So you can see there's a little bit of uh, you know distance and these uh, these lines are kind of going out in different directions. So that's because this face is going that way, the other face is kind of at a different angle and therefore these normals are kind of going out at different angles as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna smooth these out and we're gonna do that by using the auto smooth function right here. You can also make the normal length uh, larger if you want. You can do something like that and go wild but uh, it's not really relevant. So let's go ahead and just try this auto smooth thing. Now you can set this auto smooth to any angle. Um, depends on the prop that you're looking at and depends on the smoothing. I'm gonna take off the normals for now. Uh, what I can do is maybe select 45. I think that's the default. And I'm just gonna make sure I have weld vertex selected and go ahead and auto smooth. And you can see now that smooths out a lot of his face right there. But if we, do, if we go to the side of his face right here and say for example, instead of 45, I entered something like 180, and then I selected auto smooth. That's gonna auto smooth it a little too much and we're gonna have kind of bumps like this on his face, which is what we don't want. We can go ahead and use something like uh, even up to 80. 
uh, and go ahead and auto smooth and that'll be a little bit better. Now the values will really depend on your on your prop. So not all values of each prop are going to be the same. You'll have to experiment with uh, the different angles for the best results. So let's do the same thing for uh, for Freddy here. Select all of his stuff and uh, auto smooth it. And then uh, Teddy, shift select and auto smooth everything for Teddy. All right, so these guys look nice and smooth now. So let's talk about how they're going to be added into the scene. And to do that, we need to look at their pivot points. So say, for example, I wanted to resize these statues. If I select the statues and use the R hotkey, you can see my gizmo appears over here for some reason. And that's because this is the current pivot point for my prop. So what I want to do to make sure that these guys are able to be moved and rotated and uh, this W, E, and R impressing here, by the way, for the move, rotate, and scale gizmos respectively, I want to make sure that they're able to move, rotate, or scale around the middle of the prop. So let's go ahead and fix that by going all the way up here to pivot. And I'm going to select edit pivot for my entire prop. Now we can manually set our pivot right here, or normally the fastest way is just to go down to, uh, you know, pivot center right here. I normally like bottom center myself. So then we have this pivot at the bottom center. We can go close that. And now we can move the characters around like this. Let's control Z that. We can scale them, um, you know, from the middle, whereas before they would have scaled from the one side. So it's normally good to center your pivot points. Uh, in addition to the entire prop, we can do that for the sub props as well. So let's select Eddie, and you can see the pivot point returns to this area right here. And we'll edit pivot. And we'll just go to bottom center right here. And then the same thing for Freddy. You can just go bottom center. And Teddy, bottom center as well. So now each guy has his own pivot point at the uh, bottom center of his own head. So we'll just go ahead and close that. And the second item of business is we don't know really how big these guys, guys are right now compared to uh, other characters and stuff in iClone. So in 3D Exchange, we have a little 3D reference dummy up here. You can just press Control D, and that guy will appear. And that's about as big as our normal G5 or G6 characters like Mason and Chuck would be. So that's a good reference. Uh, now, I don't really know how big these Moai statues are supposed to be in real life. I've never been to Easter Island. But uh, maybe, say, for example, we want to make them a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and select the statues, press the R hotkey, and scale them up, something like, something like that. Now let's take off the dummy then. And I want to see this uh, item right here. This is our world axis. You can also press Control A. And you can see this is where the world axis is. So we know our, our guys are going to import like this. They each have their own pivot points. Their the prop pivot point is in the middle. But when we add them into our scene, we want them to add where we click and drag in the scene. So to fix that, we can go ahead and change the transform values. Make sure you have the entire um, object selected here, the highest level of the hierarchy. And we can go ahead and select align to ground. And that's going to align them to our scene route right here. So again, if we just uh, click on something else, we can see we have our world axis right there. And currently the way they're going to add into the scene, this guy's going to be facing the x-axis, which is the red little line there. And on his left is the um, y-axis, which is the green right there. And if we wanted these guys to, you know, come in a little bit larger, even we can just, you know, select them again, our hotkey and scale them a little bit larger. If we want them to add in when they're add in a little bit rotated, we can do that as well. Maybe add in, um, maybe he's facing this way. Let's just keep him facing the uh, the middle, the red axis there, just for simplicity's sake. But now there's one final thing we need to do. Um, all these modifications that we've made to the pivot point, or rather the position and the scale and everything like that, that's not going to be retained in our prop information unless we go over here and press this little button called reset transform you can see right now we have the rotation a little bit off if we made it like that you can see the rotation value uh, moving around like that we're just going to keep it you know relatively around uh, where we wanted it to be and the scale value is a little bit higher than it should be so all I have to do is just press reset transform and that'll reset everything so now we know exactly where this character will add in he'll this middle character what's his name Freddy. Freddy will be facing the uh, x-axis and their scale will be a little bit larger. And you'll also notice that there's one thing over here, this uh, Teddy guy, he has a little bit of a material issue and the material is just stretching on his face. And I'm going to show you how to fix that once we get into iClone. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and export this now using the uh, Control e iClone export here in the top left. And you can export to your target version, iClone 5 or iClone 6. In this case, I'm using iClone 6. And then um, you want to export geometry. 
you can call them whatever you want. We can call them Moai buddies. And uh, we want to export all of the uh, all of the data right here. And the max texture size, it really depends on your prop. I think these guys are okay to keep at 1024. And you want to make sure embed external textures are selected. And you can choose to export it to whatever folder you want. I'm just going to export to the default um, iClone custom folder, which I'll show you in just a moment. So let's go ahead and press OK. And that uh, does our export right there. Let's go back over into iClone here. And you can see now we have our Moai buddies in the custom folder of our props. So if we go over to the props tab right here, these are your regular props in the template tab. Uh, you know, you can see uh, all the stuff over here. And then you have your custom tab. And I only have this one model saved in our custom tab. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these the guys that are currently on this scene. We can just select them all and delete them. And I'm going to drag in my new Moai buddies. And we're going to replace those old guys. And you can see they add in. And again, the middle guy, Freddy, is facing the uh, world axis. If we, uh, you know, switch over here to uh, world move, you can see that's the same as the local axis right now, just facing directly that way. And that's how we wanted them to import. And we can rotate the uh, them around. Um, we can even take them individually. If we go into the scene tab right here, and I can select Eddie. Maybe Eddie, um, I want him to be up here. Let's just move into the top level over here. There we go. Something like that will be cool. That's a good place for Eddie. Up here, we can rotate him around as well. Something like that. And then uh, Freddy over here, we'll just keep him where he's facing. And then uh, the Teddy guy, this is the guy that needs the uh, alterations done to his face here. And you can see you can't really see it over here. We'll just maybe um, bring him up over here so we can get a better lighting situation. And so this is... Uh, it's really useful, especially for, you know, props like cars. So you can manipulate the wheels separately, obviously. Um, let's just put this guy here um, to have your own sub props. And so, yeah, there's kind of gazing around. Okay, so let's take a look at um, Teddy's materials right here. So you can see the material sort of stretched on the side of his face right there. So I'm just going to go over to the material tab in the modify panel. And I'm going to select a planer. And that's going to map the materials, uh, do some UV mapping. It's going to map the materials to his face a little bit better. Now, this is sort of hit and miss. You may have to experiment with different uh, you know, shapes and alignments and everything like that. But eventually, you should be able to get something good. In this case, I can just use the default ones and select Apply. And that's going to apply directly to my character's face. So it's not stretched anymore. We can go up and we can see the diffuse map right here. That's the diffuse map that we are you know, applying to his face right there. All right, so we got our three guys right there. And if you want, you can go into your uh, content tab and you can save them individually as well. If I wanted to maybe say, for example, um, save this, uh, let's save uh, Freddy here individually. And we go to our content tab with him selected and we use the uh, plus button here in our custom folder still. If I say plus, you do not want to replace it because that's going to replace your entire um, prop right there. So we'll just select no. And when we do, we have the option to save this guy as, you know, Super Freddy by himself. And then we can bring in as many Freddies as we want right here. And you can see he comes in at the same angle as he normally would. And you can see his scale is a little bit smaller as well. So if we scale this guy up again, let's make him like Super Freddy, a super large Freddy right here, and go to our parameters. And you can see his scale is super large. If we select select tra or Reset Transform here and add him in again, so we don't want to replace this. We'll just call this guy Big Big Freddy right here. And if we add uh, Big Freddy in, he should add at the same size. There we go. So again, in iClone, if you save an iClone, you also have to make sure you reset transform. Otherwise, it may add in at the original value. So we can just delete these two Big Freddies. They're kind of blocking our view here of the beautiful ocean and these guys. So uh, here we go. That's pretty much it for uh, you know saving your props. Again, it'll be different for each individual uh, prop, your auto smooth. Uh, you may have to use different values. Your materials will be mapped in different ways and all that fun stuff. But uh, that's pretty much how you can import them into 3D Exchange from an external software. Make a few adjustments in 3D Exchange or in iClone. You can do most of that stuff as well, with the exception of auto smooth. And then save them and import them into your scene. So that's about it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching and make sure you check out our tutorial on character import as well.